Hi, I'm Rachel, and I've been trying to make this video a few times already. <laughs> the first time I've rambled on and on and on, and the second time the video file got corrupted, so knock on wood, that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't knock so close to the camera. <laughs> But anyway, this is my coverage of the 2018 National Jewish Book Awards. The National Jewish Book Awards are given annually to uh, books published uh, in America uh, on Jewish content, and it's a variety of subjects in fiction and nonfiction. Uh, and just a few days ago, they announced uh, the winners and the finalists for each topic, and in a couple of months, they'll have a big dinner to celebrate it all. <laughs> But I'm using this uh, announcement to curate my uh, Jewish literature published in a 2018 list that I want to read. I've done this list in the past, but I focused uh, exclusively on fiction. And this year I'm going to also uh, focus a little on nonfiction. And also uh, the list I'm making this year is um, a fair bit shorter than the ones I've done in years past because I found them difficult to keep up with, and I have plenty of other reading goals that I want to get to in 2019. So instead, I chose nine titles, six in fiction and three in nonfiction, um, to read this year. And I thought I would take this moment to highlight all of those books for you. So I'll start with my fiction list. The first thing I added was The Girl from Berlin by Ronald H. Balson. I remember immediately being attracted to this cover the first time I saw it, you know, with the beautiful pastel Tuscany in the background and the backlit woman at the window in the front. Uh, this uh, novel takes place in Italy, and uh, that intrigues me because my family is from Italy, and I believe it is one of those novels that juxtaposes past and present. We have a few people coming to Tuscany in the present to... Um, look into a mysterious event from the past and unravel the event and then we as the audience also get to see the event directly and it has to do with a Jewish woman who came from Berlin uh, I believe around World War II and the legacy she left behind her. The second book on my fiction list is Sadness as a White Bird by Moriel Rothman Zecher. I've had this in my sights for about a year now, basically, since I heard about it. This is the book that touches upon the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The protagonist in this book is an Israeli uh, young man about to enter the army, but he has made friends with a pair of Palestinian siblings and is concerned about the possibility of having to serve in the occupied territories. So this, I believe, would be a bit of a Bildungsroman for him, um, and coming to uh, challenge the broader world and uh, the morality of uh, his situation. And I think it's going to be a fraught but uh, important read. The next book, the third book on my fiction list, I think will be a little lighter, at least in tone. This is Ariel Sampson, Freelance Rabbi by Manish Chana. Manish Chana is the pen name of um, a African-American Orthodox rabbi, so he is a minority within a minority, uh, and the uh, cover copy of this book uh, has that light-hearted touch to it, but I believe he'll be touching on a whole variety of issues of importance to uh, Jews of color, from racism to anti-Semitism. And I gotta love this cover because it looks like it's about Jews going to Hogwarts, but instead these are all ornate yods, which are the uh, pointers we use uh, for reading the Torah. And the fourth and final book from uh, the fiction uh, winners list, and winners and finalists list anyway, is uh, The Last Watchman of Old Cairo by Michael David Lucas. I also love this cover, the starkness of the words against the backdrop. And anyway, this is another book that I believe juxtaposes past and present. And we have a protagonist uh, from an interfaith family. This is an interfaith Jewish and Muslim family. And uh, I believe he has, an an he has had ancestors in his family that are um, Muslim guards of uh, the old synagogue in Cairo. And so we'll get to learn about that in fiction form, and that makes me very excited to delve into uh, Jewish history uh, from other parts of the Middle East. I mentioned that this was my final fiction uh, book from the prize list because I've decided to be contrary and not pick all of my fiction books from the prize list, but to also uh, 
add a couple uh, 2018 releases that personally spoke to me, even though they didn't make it to the awards. So the fifth book on my uh, fiction list is Gateway to the Moon by Mary Morris. I first uh, heard about this title, I think, from, from Steve Donahue when he unhauled the book like in galley form over a year ago. This is a book about uh, Converso Jews. Converso Jews are the descendants of Spanish and Portuguese Jews, so <laughs> cat goes crazy, uh, who were forced to uh, convert from Judaism, but they secretly kept some old traditions and passed them down, descendants to descendants, um, and uh, the descendants now might not know exactly where those traditions come from. And so the conceit of this novel is that a uh, converso young man starts working for um, a more traditionally Jewish family and sees some similarities in their practice, and that sort of opens the door wide about his community. Uh, and I think it'll uh, teach us something about the converso community as well, so I hope. I love this cover with the uh, striking sky. And I've heard about Mary Morris. I've known about her for a while since she came to speak at the local JCC, and I've been meaning to read her fiction ever since. And the sixth and final book on my fiction list this year is Paper is White by Hilary Zaid. I believe this is a fiction of a more literary bent. Um, it takes place uh, at the turn of the 21st century or right before it, when a uh, woman wants to marry her girlfriend. This is before gay marriage is legal in all of America. And she also wants to okay it with her grandmother, but her grandmother is uh, deceased. And she um, gets into a relationship with a Holocaust survivor about this. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm just, I always am curious and invested in uh, both the Jewish and uh, lesbian experiences. So I um, am eager to give this a go. So now I'll talk about my three nonfiction um, choices. There are a whole bunch of books um, in the winners and finalists list in nonfiction that sound fascinating to me, but <laughs> I can only read so much, and I'm sure I'll be reading other nonfiction throughout the year as well. Uh, for this particular project, I decided to focus on three books that uh, most encompass my own identity, because why not? So the first book on my nonfiction reading list is On Middle Ground, A History of the Jews of Baltimore by Eric L. Goldstein and Deborah R. Wiener. This is uh, about the history of the Jews of Baltimore. I was born in Baltimore City. My, uh, I grew up in uh, Baltimore County. Uh, my parents are both transplants, so we don't personally have history here, but I'm certainly invested in it. And also, um, early last year, I read um, Eric L. Goldstein's uh, The Price of Whiteness uh, for my Sammy Roar nonfiction reading project. It's about uh, Jews and uh, the, their identity with uh, whiteness in America, and uh, it informed a lot of the rest of my reading. I, I brought it up a lot as I read more uh, Jewish American history throughout the year, and so I'm excited to see where he goes next in his career. <laughs> the second book on my nonfiction reading list is Beyond Chrismica, The Christian Jewish Interfaith Family in the United States by Samira K. Mehta, and I am from a interfaith family. My mother is Jewish, my father is not. Uh, interfaith uh, marriages, particularly between uh, Christians and Jews in America, is skyrocketing. It has been for several decades, and I'm very intrigued, uh, basically, uh, to use modern parlance, to see myself uh, in literature. I'm very curious on a broader scale about how interfaith uh, families have impacted uh, Jewish cultural identity in particular, so I'm eager to give this a go. And the third book on my uh, nonfiction reading list is It Elise Least Jews from Emancipation to Fascism by Shira Klein. So my family, through my father, is Italian, although, as I mentioned, my, my father isn't Jewish, so I'm not directly um, connected to Italy's Jews, but I have long been intrigued by them. I call them my step-family, and I'm eager to give uh, this history a go. Um, I believe Klein will be focusing mostly on the Holocaust, on uh, the myth, really, of Italy's so-called benevolence to Jews. Uh, of all the Axis powers, um, Italy's Jews um, died the least in the Holocaust, but of course that doesn't uh, say anything about uh, their broader treatment. But another fascinating uh, part of this book that I've read about is uh, the Jewish-Italian community's uh, affiliation with fascism, at least uh, up until 1938. Uh, uh, and that's, not, that's something I haven't uh, considered before about uh, Jews supporting fascism, so it'll be good to learn that history. 
And finally, I have a special addendum to my list of nine, because why not? <laughs> Usually my addendum pick is a collection of Jewish short stories, but this year I decided to push the short stories to another project and focus instead on uh, Amos Oz's swan song, Dear Zealots, Letters from a Divided Land. Some of you might know that Amos Oz uh, died recently. I'm still a bit depressed by it. He was uh, an advocate for peace and uh, for the two-state solution and also uh, a prolific writer in uh, Israeli letters, and I've uh, slowly been picking through his backlist, and I believe I'll continue to do that throughout the years. And this one stuck out to me uh, particularly because it was recently published, and it certainly seems like he meant for it to be his farewell because uh, the copy talks about how it's a, uh, a letter for his uh, his grandchildren. I mean, I don't think it's, it's not officially a letter. It's not epistolary, but... Um, I believe it's his grappling with uh, right-wing zealotry in Israel and uh, with uh, the idea of the two-state solution, which he has been championing. I think it's gotten some mixed reviews in uh, the press, but uh, I know for myself I, I tend to agree with Oz a lot, and I'm very curious about uh, the final wisdom he has to impart. So that about covers it for me now. I'm pretty happy uh, adding my list to the uh, multitude of booktube lists out there right now as we all tackle the new year of reading. I'm also happy at the diversity that my Jewish list encompasses, uh, from genres to areas of uh, Jewish identity that uh, these books encompass. And uh, you can find links to all of the Goodreads pages for these uh, books down below, and I'll also link to more information about the National Jewish Book Awards. So thank you so much for joining me. Hope this goes up, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next time.